Welcome to Topple Uncaged. I'm Steve Topple and you're locked on to the UK's hottest politics and music podcast. Each week, I bring you the rawest takes on the big stories making the news, always joined by a very special guest. Then, I pleasure your mind, body and soul with the freshest, most banging international music going. Uncaged. If you want my love, have it, make it worth my while. If you want my love, find it in a dance hall. Them a call for your weekend love, so them want for the side piece only a night piece love of indecent love. And I try to me to my wife, your wife if warm to do. I am very excited by my guest on today's show because we have been trying to get her on for months. But she has just been so, so busy. And anyone who follows her on Instagram will know this, that it's been hard to pin her down. But we have got her now and I am really excited because she is one of the most fire acts to come out of the past few years. She's got a voice which could charm the angels out of heaven. Um, music. Wow. <laughs> you have. I haven't even started. Started yet and hadn't even introduced you, my friend. Oh. <laughs> she has got a voice that could charm the angels out of heaven. Musically, she's on point. Gorgeous mix of styles and and genres and inspirations in what she does. But she's also absolutely lovely, and she does some fantastic work, which I want to talk about outside of music as well. She's a multi-talented artist, uh, right up my street as always with this podcast. I'm very excited to be able to welcome onto the show the fantastic, the sublime <laughs> Savannah. Hello. Hi, thank you for having me, um, Steve Topple. That was a grand <laughs> introduction. Wow. That's no, crazy. My pleasure. I do. I think you're brilliant. I love everything you do. and it's, it's Thank so- you so much. I appreciate that. I'm I'm always excited to speak to guests because my girlfriend, I tell this story a lot, but I'm going to tell you, my girlfriend always moans at me because she's like, you heap too much praise on your guests all the time. <laughs> and my argument is, I only have the best guests on this podcast. That's why. So, and you fit into yeah. that category perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on. It is really, really good to speak to you. I mean, you, no you, you, um, you've been prolific now for quite a few years, actually. Um, but you, mm-hmm. you... D- d- officially blew up this year um quite quite hugely um with the brilliant track nobody man which we'll get into a little bit bit, little bit later on but this has been a long time in the making for you hasn't it i mean take us right back to the start savannah where where did this musical journey all begin for you were you a very young age (laughs) oh my god it began i think when i was 16 on a national competition here and you know there was there's a back and forth in those years from 16 to like, I think 21, um, where I was, you know, I had to decide that music was the thing I wanted to do. And I settled in it being my purpose. I think, um, perhaps that evaded me for a little bit because of all I had to deal with in life. Mm. But once I, once it, once, um, I had the epiphany, it was, there was no turning back, you know what I mean? And then, so I started working with ProTJ and um, yeah, it kind of just went off from there. And do, I mean, <laughs> I, I no, I, I understand. There's, there's so many artists say that to me as well. It's kind of like that. I, I had um, Jazz Elise on a few weeks ago. She's absolutely brilliant. Love her. She's yeah. she's absolutely yeah. stunning, stunning artist. And I mean, her her sort of journey to this point has been as equally as fascinating. But you, a lot of artists do seem to have this kind of moment where they think, "No, I have to do this. This is this is what I was born to do in life." Was was so? Was that how it was for you? You just knew that music was ultimately your calling do you think i think so i think um yeah i think uh that's what happened and i feel like it it's it's good that it happens this way for artists because then it's not you know that the intentions or the motivations are correct you're not just in it to you know because you think it's easy or because it's a good way for you i don't know what when it is that you're sure that it's your purpose you, you go about what you create more carefully you know you're more careful about what you do. Yeah, I I think you've hit the nail on the head there, absolutely. And, and if artists are doing it for the right reasons, it ultimately, you can tell it in their music. Do you know what I mean? You can tell when someone's a product and has been manufactured, exactly. manufactured, if right. you like. And, uh, but when they haven't, it shines through. I mean, another 
artist I had on was Jamil a few weeks ago. Yeah. He's a really good example yeah. of that because he, he does really sort of strong dancehall tracks, but it's clean and it's all very conscious and, and he mix and his latest album is absolutely brilliant. And he said it's just he knew he was born to do this and, and I think it always reflects in an artist's music. And of course one of these artists um as you say protege which you're signed to indignation um as is Leela IK fantastic fantastic musician as well who's been on this podcast before. I mean it must be amazing working with him because I interviewed him several months ago now and my goodness he's he's something else to speak to and he must be actually <laughs> phenomenal to work with no yeah yeah for sure i'm super grateful about that you know working with somebody though it definitely has its its challenges you know what i mean i'm grateful that it was him because when these challenges present themselves i'm always able to talk to him about it and we're always able to implement like strategies and you know move forward in ways that it takes what I've had to say into consideration. So, and working with him has been, you know, useful just because he listens and he's paying attention. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. And I, I think it shows it shows in everything he does, and it, and especially it shows in in your music. I mean, you're this as I said in the introduction, you're this wonderful mix of styles. I mean, just to talk through some sort of standout tracks for me that you've done. Um, you did several years ago. Now it's off your EP. You did "Love the Way," which was this brilliant, yeah. brilliant kind of. It was almost lovers rock, I suppose, wasn't it really? But what you did so cleverly yeah. within that, there was a brilliant use of minor chords in there, which really stuck out for me because it's it's quite unusual in in love as rock as a sort of class of music to have right. min- minor chords slotted in there and it really it completely changed the track and took it into a completely this wonderful territory it was an extremely clever composition i mean brilliant vocals on it as well you then go Thank into you. my pleasure i haven't started yet <laughs> you then go into a track like Ch- um, chant it which is gorgeous kind of r&b ballad ballad but then it kind of had distinct overtones of reggae with some calypso musical devices mix in and your vocal was stunning on it I mean your your vocals overall are always stunning you have this voice which has this wonderful ability to flip between a sort of an alto range which is very well rounded vocally um, and wonderful resonance to it and then you go up into this soprano as well with very intricate riffs in that range of wow. your voice as well <laughs> and you flip yeah. effortlessly between your head voice and your chest voice but what what is so marvellous about what you do vocally is it's, it's so effortless you just like you it's just like you're going well yeah it's just coming out of my mouth and I'm not really having to try hard with it and that's that's always a sign of such brilliant singers is that it sounds like you, it's just literally your voice is an instrument which which you're completely in charge of and and, it, and it's almost playing of its own accord and I mean I think also a bit too shy was another track which showcased your voice wonderfully it was this gorgeous composition with sort of roots mixed with elements of dub and then yeah, we yeah I love that song yeah br- brilliant brilliant Brilliant, brilliant track and the link to it will be in the show notes listeners of course um and then we're bang up to date with what was one of your latest releases which of course nobody man blew up blew up blew up everywhere it's this gorgeous kind of smooth soul track mixed with elements of kind of afro b rob you bust some fine moves in the video as well savannah i have to say <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah you, oh. you've done good there girl um and your vocals again brilliant brilliant vocals you you, you sort of flip into a bit of sing jazz at times but again a wonderful use of your range throughout the track and and gorgeous vocal riffs and they're kind of I mean that the, those tracks I mentioned kind of encapsulate you as an artist you're not boxed in when it comes to a specific genre there's real elements of all sorts of styles within what you do and distinct sort of soul overtones for me me as well I mean where where does this musical diversity that you have come from is it is it personal taste is it what you listen to growing up um where where's this where Where's this mix, this blame of genres come from, Savannah? Wow, that's that's a brilliantly crafted question. Thank you for that. My pleasure. Um, okay, no, I'm. It, it comes from a bit of all of it, I think. Definitely influenced by the music that you first hear growing up, and then when you have a little bit more autonomy over what you listen to, then you go go out and research more music um, that you are. Uh, specifically drawn to but um growing up i heard a lot of soul and blues music in the house you know what i mean my mother had these cassettes um 
where she'd be playing the Manhattans, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'd be playing Tony Braxton. She'd be playing Kenny Rogers, Celine Dion. Um, and those were those were the staple. The, that's, that, that was kind of like the staple of what I listened to because that's what she loved, mm. you know? And then you'd, mo- you, you'd move into the square now, like into the square of the town. And then every weekend you'd have boxes put up with music, speaker boxes put up um, along the corner of the street. Just because, you know, we're really, we're, we love music here. And we take every, every opportunity or every break from a, no- a normal work week to kind of come together and lime over music. Mm. And that was never missing growing up. And I'd hear artists like, you know, Gregory Isaacs and Bob Marley and um, uh, Barris Hammond, yes. Luciano, uh, I Wayne. It, 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 so I, I got a good blend of things. And of course, you'd never, they'd never leave out the soul aspect as well, like the Whitney Houston and, you know, the, the Celine Dion. So that's really how I think that's the kind of music I was first exposed to as well as gospel. Cause everybody was always playing gospel. Um, but as far as me, you know, kind of growing up a little bit and being able to go onto the computer and, and look at music that I really liked, I was into alternative rock for a little bit. Oh, wow. You know? okay. Yeah. Green day. And, um, Enya and um, Evanescence and just very moody, like, mm. uh, <laughs> music that you feel like you need to. Well, because I thought I was such a complex teenager, you know what I mean? I, <laughs> I thought I was such a complex person <laughs> that I needed my music to reflect that, you know? Okay. <laughs> so I'd listen to the, I'd listen to the Avril Lavigne and just like, oh, like, you know, just sing and like pretend yeah. as, I, as, as, as if I'm in a music video with black uh, mascara running down my face you know <laughs> it's very dramatic um so i was into alternative rock for a little bit and then i moved on to um stretching myself to uh what's her name again i forget india ari yeah, yeah i was really obsessed with her for a little bit and um the fray mm. which is, i guess is still in the realm of rock and um yeah, just I guess as we as we move up, as I get older, I, I got into Frank Ocean and you know um, Jesse Jesse J as well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She's from she's from where I live in London, actually. Yeah. Yes, yes, she's she brilliant. is. And of and of course, like Adele, you know, just as as it gets more frequent, I recent that that's what I was listening to. But um, mm. and then no, I listen to like everything classical. Jazz. I went in. I went through a jazz phase, phase as well. I was really, really um fond of Nina Simone. So mm. yeah, I kind of. It's kind of a mix of everything. And then obviously dancehall. You'd hear dancehall everywhere. Beanie Man, Bone to Killer, um, Elephant Man. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. All those great assassin. You know, it's crazy. My goodness, yeah. you you are a real buffet of musical styles. Good grief! That's, yeah, that's the, but I think that's brilliant. And that, now you've said all that, and listening to your voice, you can hear you hear elements of all of that in you. It's, the jazz, for example, the way you do these sort of real upper range soprano riffs is is very kind of almost Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald, that kind of uh, that yes. kind of that kind of style. Um, yes. And the, the, the rock element is fascinating as well, actually, because that's you hear tinges of that in your interpretation as well right. the lyrics absolutely yeah. it's fascinating listening to you i'm, I'm always intrigued thank you so much how artists sort of come to know my pleasure how artists come to this point and really 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 yeah. interesting i mean what what you also do so well is there's there's real messages within your music and the message behind nobody man was extremely extremely strong um and yeah. but you you did it so cleverly. I mean, on the face of it, nobody, man. You've you've got a video where you're you're brucking out with these dancers, and it's sort of <laughs> high, well, you are, and it's and it's high high sort of high vis kind of neon colours, um, and it, it's all very stylized the video. And yet you've got this brilliant track, which is essentially about sort of breaking down the misogyny and patriarchy that exists and the fact that women argue over men and um, that they sh- why are we behaving like this and et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Really strong and such yeah. a cleverly composed project, I want to call it, not a track, a project. Thank you. But it is. Thank but you. like I say, the, the video is sort of juxtaposes wonderfully with the message and, and, yeah. and the two... 
shouldn't work, but they do. It's brilliant. It's extremely clever, extremely clever. I mean, is the is message music um, and having sort of conscious elements to what you do, is that always important to you? Is it what kind of drives all aspects of your music or do you like to have a balance between brucking out stuff and more, more message music? It, it, how does that work for you when it comes to your tracks? I think... Um... I think yes, it, it is important to believe in something. I guess I think not even from an artist perspective, but just as a human perspective. Mm. I think it's important to have things that you believe in and stand for and stand by and um are kind of sharing, you know, when you get the opportunity to do so. Um so yes, it is important. I mean, honestly when I wrote Nobody Man, I it, I wasn't necessarily thinking about the misogyny and patriarchy at first mm. it was really just me thinking about how i had um lost the connection to a friend of mine a male um who when when his girlfriend um grew suspicious of me mm. being into him which was never the case you yeah. know what i mean i guess her insecurities kind of um showed themselves in that way and it, and it really affected our friendship you know what i mean and we're, we really never talk anymore um so I, I was kind of just writing from that personal perspective of you know, I don't want anybody's boyfriend. I, I was kind of frustrated when I wrote it. I was like, well, I don't want anybody's boyfriend, you know, yeah. so to kind of just like declare that to myself, because I, I don't know, that's kind of just what came when I, when I sat with the beat, I, that was what was on my heart. And I was just like, I don't want nobody boyfriend. Like, I don't know what husband, it's not what I'm into. And then I kind of, uh, went launched into why and, you know, what I thought was acceptable in terms of faithfulness in relationships and, you know, just how it's, it's, it's played out, you know, it's kind of played out the, the message of taking a girl's man. I think it's been hyped and celebrated in Jamaican culture. And, and I think it's been normalized because men want to have multiple women. So women are no kind of like, you know, making it seem, well, I think women have accepted it. Most, some women have accepted it. And I think it's okay to say that, I'm not with it, you know. I I um I believe I believe in it in this kind of a relationship, and um, it's okay to say that. So, yeah. Yeah, and I mean the, the why, as you so eloquently put it, completely comes across in the end. I mean, as as as, as you say, it's almost the accept. It's not, it's not a Jamaican problem. It's the same over here. Um, in the UK, yeah. it is, it's almost acceptable that men can do this, and that women should just accept it, or they should therefore yeah. then fight amongst themselves. Completely yeah. preposterous in 2019 yeah. that we're still in this position. It but, is, how, it is. but however much people proclaim it isn't, and after. The the Me Too movement and so on and so forth. We we are still there. No, it totally is. It totally is because men men want the freedom to be able to, you know, move between different women, yeah. right? So what women are faced with that is that um they they kind of have to either reject the man completely or settle with the side piece um position, which I think it if it is that if it is that everyone isn't transparent and keeping each other accountable in the relationship then you must be suffering. Um, you must be taking blows to your self-esteem if you're settling to be like an addict to a main relationship. I can't see how somebody would benefit from that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if it is that you're not, I guess, not um, going about it in a very deep way or wanting any kind of fulfillment and it's just sex, then that's a whole other conversation. But I can't imagine you carrying on this relationship, being a secret second partner for years you know what i mean and just and that being enough because i've seen it firsthand in terms of like having friends and um loved ones who have settled for that and they're they've never been happy you know so it's like why is it such a yeah you know i'll I'll settle for this because it means i have less of a commitment because it's a lie i don't know i think i think women end up lying to themselves to facilitate men and you know we we definitely should not do that so yeah, no, absolutely. No, I, I think it's kind of it, it's kind of almost a microcosm of all the ills of society, really. Yeah. That, that people yeah. people are no longer sort of valued as individuals as such, and valued as people, and especially women in their own rights. That, that they they feel to get any kind of sort of gratification or what have you, they they have to do things which are ultimately not really comfortable with. But exactly. it, that's an, that's another huge topic. <laughs> Um, to be honest, we we could talk about that one for hours. But you, but you've. 
I mean, we touched on a lot of points there, but then you've yeah. kind of you've kind of flipped almost to the reverse of it in another project you've done outside of music. And I do want to talk about this because I, th- I think it's mm-hmm. really important what you've done. Um, I, yeah. I, I think it's very interesting. I um, mean, you've you are multi talented. You're singer, songwriter, lyricist, um, also yeah. actress, um, modelling as well. But you've recently right. were assistant director on a short film which was part of three, I believe. Yeah, um, so it was part of three. Um, the series is called uh, About Face, and the first installment of the series was called The Just and the Blind, mm. right? And then the second one is Fair. This is the one that I worked on. Um, Just talk, yeah, talk the listeners through what that film was about, because it, it's absolutely fascinating what, you, what you've been involved with there. Thank you. Um, well, uh, Fair is really... Okay, so if you talk about the goal of, of Fair, which is you know, was written by Mark Bamuthi Joseph, a Haitian poet, but he also leads the social impact um, department at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., mm. right? It's really about saving black male lives yep. because the statistics are quite grim in terms of um, how men are, you know, how black men are targeted by the system and how they're either put away, incarcerated, or killed by a certain age. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, the criminalization of just black men um, the world over, it's, 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 it's not even tragic. It's, um, it's, it's not even heartbreaking, but it's unjust, mm. unjust, right? Yeah. So uh, fair is really, fair and the whole series is really just about um, saving black men by educating the black community on what's happening and, and it really is like a, I think, a personal look into how uh, institutionalized racism, which is, you know, how the world is run right now, um, impacts a man and how he navigates his life, a black man and how he navigates his life, how he comes across, how he interacts with his friends. You know what I mean? Like uh, mm. from a like an inherently toxic masculine perspective, as, you know, um, and you see it a lot in Jamaican society as well. It, you're not really encouraged. And just with men the world over, you're not encouraged, but particularly black men, um, where you're not encouraged to kind of show your emotions or, or be a whole human being. You're, you're, kind of, you're kind of shoved into this corner of just being like uh, super strong and hard mm. and, and edgy and, 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 and rough. You know, I guess those are the adjectives that we use here. Um, and as far as it goes to profile a criminal. You know what I mean? Like if a black man here, you know, if he if his hair is not, you know, trimmed, mm. then it's automatic that, you know, he'd more likely be a criminal because of him just being fully black then. If it if his blackness isn't isn't tamed in any way. So it's 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 really just um the ver- the, the the film that I was the series the installment that i was a part of fair where i helped it um direct with Johan saviani it was really just to show you that the light the, just in the mind of a young boy 17 years old and how he is navigating life with these this this um very i don't know this very narrow way of of um of uh, how people see him just even within a black country because we we still criminalize our men here based on whether or not they comb their hair, you know, mm. whether or not they have dreadlocks. If they're if they're black, there's still that presence of colorism where we would prefer to assign like success and beauty and think just these these very these things that would help to I guess inspire confidence in people to people who are closer to white, you know, to being white or light skin and, and things like that. So. Mm. That's what that's what fair is about, and I was um, I was really happy to be a part of it, proud of it actually, yeah. If you want to grab a tea, coffee, or any other kind of refreshment, then do so now, because me and Savannah will be back with more amazing chat in just a few seconds. Absolutely, and there was a reason I wanted to ask you about that because I I think. It sums up the measure of you, Savannah, as not only an artist, but as an individual, because you've taken a problem, a major issue in Nobody Man, and then you've gone to the root of the issue by being involved in fear. 
on a yeah. assistant director level and i mean that's yeah. such a such a um, massive sort of round of applause to you for doing that and and such Thank you. such a well thought out and like i say it's a, it's a measure of you as a person that, that you that you've sort of taken from one end of the spectrum gone right back to the root of a problem and you're involved right involved in it and doing it there because that is the answer at the end of the day my my girlfriend always says we need to join the dots in society and we forgot to how how to do join the dots from when we were children and not enough people do yeah. it anymore and it's so crucial that you do something like nobody man which presents the the problem and the, an ill in society and then you go right back to where this is coming Coming from with the right. with the short film fear so much respect to you for doing that i think it's fucking brilliant thank absolutely you. brilliant thank you so much i appreciate that you also, I've, I've noticed on your Instagram, and I, I just want to go off script a bit here, but I, I just remembered, and I do want to bring it up. You're also involved in, um, is, is it Clean Up Jamaica? Is... No, Dirty Up Jamaica, ah, that's right? That's, um, that's, that's the name of the campaign, and it really yeah. is focusing on um, banning the use of plastic, uh, well, banning single plastic use, mm. right? So that's when you just buy a bottle of water that's like a small bottle of water, and you just throw it away immediately, mm -hmm. you know? So what what has happened in Jamaica is that we banned plastic bags and um, just in an effort to decrease the amount of like waste that we're for waste management essentially. Yeah. We want to manage our waste better. Um, drains are always being clogged up with you know uh, garbage because people are just neglecting um, their their waste. You know they they kind of just throw garbage anywhere. So. No, that's in Jamaica. It's just in an effort to educate the Jamaican public, the Jamaican mass that uh, masses that you know we cannot do this. And then also, what happens is that when you throw away that one bottle that you used um, just once, it takes years and years, hundreds of years to degrade, right? And even then, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't um, ever really go away because it's just micro uh pieces of plastic that stay in the environment you know what i mean making yeah. soil toxic and obviously um affecting or or reefs and and um marine life and um when we burn it you know what happens as well i, I need to tell you yearly in jamaica mm -hmm. they 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 manage to light a huge uh dump right just so much garbage. It's called the Riverton Dump. And they managed to light it for some reason or the other every year. And the smoke literally takes over Kingston because there's so much garbage. Right? That is mad. Um, so, yes, yeah, disgusting, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and just, you know, we don't we don't think about um, how when we create this waste and in getting rid of it, how it pollutes the air. It, poll it decreases your quality of life when you don't have proper waste management. And then obviously it it, it, it it decreases our own life span because it's um affecting our natural resources, right? Yeah. So essentially we are damaging the earth, which will in turn damage ourselves because we it won't be able to sustain our lives, you know? Um so yeah, that's that's what Nodati of Jamaica is trying to do and they pr approached me asking if I wanted to be a part of it. Um and I said yes, because it's it's something I have always been um, passionate about in, in my own life and, tr and trying to make sure that I'm I'm doing as well as I can in terms of not eating as much meat because the meat industry puts a lot of strain on like you know mm. the um the natural resource the earth's natural resources just in in terms of factories and what and what's done um how the po how pollution happens it's it's on a very 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 large scale and and it's because we and, and it's because um of the just the mass production of meat yeah um but yes, I so I decided to work with them because I guess yeah, and I've and I've written about this in Injustice, which you know wasn't a big hit, but it was a necessary song because of the message. Um, no, it's brilliant. So track I guess as well, maybe. Though. Thank you, I appreciate that. It's very wordy. Yeah, you know, but the, but but, 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 but it wasn't too wordy. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes, yeah. The, the, yeah, certain especially sort of extremely conscious stuff can be very very heavy, and very you, wordy, have, yeah. you have to really listen. But no, you you struck a gain as you always do an extremely good ba balance with justice. It, it was just wordy enough to sort of make you sit back and go, yeah, okay, I need to think about this more, but yeah. not so much that you were like, whoa, this is too much. Right, 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 right. I don't know. I think um, I think it might been too much for some people i definitely see where 
uh, more and more people are listening to it though so the, I think the popularity of that song is growing I guess as I get more popular you know and more visible so I'm, I'm very grateful for that because if one person can listen to it even though it's not as catchy as you know the rest of my songs I think if one person can listen to it and think and um and be moved by it and, and be inspired to act differently then that's that's useful you know I want to be useful as an artist I think well <laughs> I, th- I think you're more than that but we'll come on to that in a in a little bit and <laughs> just on just on justice and as well it's extremely timely at the minute with everything that's been happening in the past few months what with um, yeah. Greta Thunberg going across the Atlantic obviously to yep. New York and the chaos with with Trump that we see yep. and the situation in oh Greenland and oh my goodness I mean do you it, I, I some, it is yeah and I I often have this conversation with my girlfriend and, and I sit here and I'm a bit more sort of cynical than she is i think but have we gone too far do you think sort of ecologically and climately Uh, can we pull ourselves back from this really do you think i mean i mean scientists have said have actually said that we've gone too far they you know the 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 climate the world over just heating up at a rate that was far um that was that's way faster than they had predicted or calculated so there is there is that narrative that it's too, it's too far gone, and then so, and then in the same breath I'm hearing that um, if we were to implement extreme measures, right, mm. then maybe we have a chance at at um, being able to live here on Earth, you know. Mm. Um, so I'm I'm hearing two things. I'm not sure. It takes a while for scientists to really, I guess, come to the 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 final conclusion. But I'm hearing both arguments at the moment. But I don't know. I, I think I think because most people aren't aware and it's not urgent for the average human being, mm. I think I think maybe that has already done us in. You know? I think I that's think, yeah. Think, Sorry, carry yeah. on. Yeah, I, I think um I think we're too far gone. If if it is that and if it is that we're not too far gone because it's not widespread enough of a of a of a thought i guess that goes through people's head we're still you know driving our cars on the road just you know driving it down the road as well just five minutes away to go pick up things and i don't know there's it's not it's not top of mind you know like if if it was if it was in our if it was in our minds as much as going to sleep or making sure that we eat then maybe we'd have a chance but i don't think i don't think people care i don't think people care do you yeah. know what? I think it, that is one of the biggest challenges. I mean, uh, it was the um, intergovernmental panel on climate change which said we've essentially got to yeah. twenty thirty to sort our sort our shit out. Otherwise, that, yeah. that's it. And I mean, we have we have a very big. Campaign. We are, that's literally eleven years away. Yeah. It's ridiculous, isn't it? That's crazy. And can we? And the thing is, as well, if if okay, so if they'd have said this maybe, I don't know, five years ago, my view might have been slightly differently. But what with the situation in the US, with what's happened with yeah. Trump, we're experiencing yeah. the same thing in the UK with the election of Boris Johnson. Um, right. There's chaos across Europe politically as well. I um, mean, as you say, people don't care. I think th- I think the challenge with people not caring though is that the system is designed to make people not care. We're so consumed. Yeah with mindless it was who was it who said it was Cali P Cali P um, brilliant rapper I had him on ages ago and he said to me that we're all consumed with nonsense it's all nonsensical we're so obsessed we have to get up go to work do our shopping make sure we watch the programs we watch on the telly do this do that check the internet blah blah go to sleep and repeat it again the next day Um, um, we're consumed with nonsense and the system has designed us to be like that though isn't it really yeah no absolutely And, and as you say like we're, we're just, even the way that success is measured, right? Mm-hmm. You know, especially, in, well, I think across the world, you know, if you earn enough money to be able to then afford a car, to be able to drive that and carry yourself about, that is deemed as successful. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the things that we've aligned with success, which is getting more stuff that, you know, will is ultimately damaging the, the, the environment, um, it's what we're focused on. It's what we're, we're, we're actively seeking out, you know? Um, I don't know because again, like we're living in a consumer society and like people want to make money and these big, huge corporations, they don't care about the environment. Mm -hmm. And so we just learn not to care about it. I think, I don't know. I don't know if that refocusing of, of how 
we just interact with each other and what we think, um, you know, success looks like and what goals are like, how our goals are formulated. I think there's, there needs to be a whole reworking of that for the right things to matter to human beings because the wrong things have mattered for so long because it's been marketed for it to, you know, for it to be important to us. So, um, I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm, literally scratching my head as i talk to you i have yeah. no idea but. no i know and i completely agree and you, you again you hit the nail on the head where you say we need sort of a reworking of how how we view everything whereas a species we need a complete yeah. reboot really because we've become we've become so embedded in yeah. in this and this it's i mean it's it's something, it's something that's been present in us, in my opinion, as a yeah. species for thousands yeah. of years, ever since the early yeah. civilizations, where we've yeah. we've structured ourselves in these hierarchies where you have a few people in charge at the top and everyone else looking up thinking, oh, I wish I had that power and I wish I had yeah. all those nice things. And it's been like it for thousands of years, but it's it's been on sort of steroids since the end of the Second World War, really. And, it, yeah. and, and it, it, it's got so extreme now, this kind of individualization of, of us as a species that it's all about what you want and you must try and have this and you yep. must have this you must yep. buy that you must yep. have success in this way and you must it's for yourself yes um, yes we need a species yes. reboot and i, I and maybe I, that reboot and maybe that reboot looks like another ice age i don't know or or you just the literally, literally took the words out of my down. mouth you took the words Sorry? out of my mouth you t- you literally took the words out of my mouth there yeah yeah um yeah maybe just maybe that reboot looks like uh, doing away with the people who are here now and you know mm-hmm. just a total renew you know I, yeah the, the earth earth will serve us justice that's all i can say <laughs> yeah. that is pretty much what i said to my girlfriend last night oddly enough yes mother nature will give us our karma in the end i think oh absolutely um, i think i th- yeah i think it, it will happen i mean just we I, I i'm a political journalist actually by trade savannah i'm not a, a music is sort of was always I love that. was always a second I thing politics is my thing really so i could chat about this to you yeah. for hours um however yeah. <laughs> it'd be a very long podcast um and we wouldn't be talking much about music <laughs> <laughs> but, I know. but it's kind of interlinked actually what what I want to talk about next because while this is very kind of heavy and there's not a lot of positivity sort of to be seen in sort of political right. and social structures in the world at the minute yeah obviously yeah. music is bucking that trend and especially everything surrounding reggae everything surrounding yeah. the revival movement increasingly dance hall as well is starting to become very conscious um and I I always I'd like to ask this question um to as many guests as possible because because I think it's a fascinating topic which doesn't actually get spoken about that much. And it was Zia Benjamin who I first had this conversation with. And there's mm-hmm. there's this whole sort of community and movement of female artists coming out not from the revival movement it's always kind of on top and to the side it's a separate movement in itself not that anyone ever wants to bloody mention that really um but it is um and it's it's brilliant female artists like yourself um jazz and lee slightly like ik like zia benjamin tara harrison um chrissy um asa coffee Coffee, um who else sharita um all these fantastic female artists yeah 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 yeah. you could literally go on for ages and that's the kind of measure of it that you could I could just reel off all these amazing female artists but the point is it is separate in my opinion to to the revival movement and it and it's crucial to I appreciate that acknowledgement you know what I mean this is exactly but this is my point that it is separate because it is it is exactly but no one's talking about it and it's really really annoying in my opinion because it it's it's extremely important because what's happening is essentially the way I'm viewing it and reading and looking into what all of you are doing. Um, it's it, You're like the revival movement in terms of that you support each other. Um, Zia Benjamin said so eloquently, she says, oh, this whole notion of how there has to be a queen of pop and a queen of soul and a queen of R&B and a queen of dancehall is absolute nonsense and it's designed by the industry to pit artists against each other and, and, and ultimately generate more sales. Um, and the, the, all the female artists coming out now, there's none of that. You all work together sort of collectively and support each other, you yeah. see, on your social yeah. media. Um, but what 
what's also happening is that there's there's this leveling up happening within the industry in terms of that it's doing away with the norms that have always existed that that women are somehow even if it's not openly said are somehow subservient to men within the industry and they're there more yeah. for show as opposed to being artists in their own right um, mm-hmm. but what it's also doing is leveling it up so you're no longer sort of below shoulder height with the men you're coming up to shoulder height yep. at the same yep. height of them and it, it's absolutely yep. fascinating to see this this happening i mean is it in for you i mean is it is it about divine timing was it is it just that the, these female artists are now coming up and your mindset is all very similar and therefore it's it's happening sort of organically or was it to do with the whole me too movement back a few years ago i mean why why is why are we seeing this now within within specifically sort of jamaican jamaican music I think we're seeing it now. I'm going to just be real with you. It's safer for women to be in music in Jamaica now. Mm. And I think maybe it is because of, you know, Jamaican men um, in power in the music industry um, are seeing that the seeing the correction that's happening globally where women are being treated as just human beings and people Mm. um, standing like alone by themselves. You know what I mean? Standing on their own two feet, like without the support of you know, um, a man. And I think that re- that regarding of, of women, just being able to say what they feel and say how they've been persecuted and say how they, what they think isn't right and how they're treated in the, in, you know, the many industries that exist in the world, I think, um, has scared men. None of them mm. want to be called out. You know what I mean? There definitely needs to be a calling out though, for sure, because there are a lot of, anyway, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, there, there are a lot of men who, that, who need to be held accountable. And, and I think, yeah, I think I think the world over men are holding each other more accountable, which is, I think, very useful for um, making sure that women are being treated with respect. Mm. But yeah, it's, it's safer. It's safer for women to be in music. I am not being asked to trade sexual favors. Yes, it is still happening. And I do know of stories where it has happened mm. and women have been you know, intimidated into these spaces where they feel like they need to do things in order to get a track done. Um, but it's it's less prevalent now, you know? So women feel like there is a space for them to be able to come in, be very um, careful and, and, and um, create music that has meaning to them uh, and, and not have to put on the 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 super sexualized image of oh this is my these are my breasts and this is my this is my ass yeah. and um look at me and and I'm and I'm talking only about sex um I don't think women feel like they need to only do that um I think it's it's becoming more normalized for women in reggae to just be like you know what I care about climate change I'm, and I'm speaking directly about myself now like I care about climate change so I'm gonna write a song about climate change and have it be supported by um, my management, which is led by Protege, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So there, there is. Um, it's safer. Music is safer for women in reggae because of the. Um, I, 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 you know, the, we didn't call it the Me Too movement in Jamaica. I, I, I think um, we weren't really paying attention to the name or the hashtag of it. Mm. Um, but we definitely saw where Harry Weinstein was being called out. We saw all of it because it was on the news. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whatever. Whatever happens in these major countries, obviously we see it because we have to pay attention to it because we're directly affected. So I think men were seeing it, women were seeing it, and it it empowered women and it made men um, think twice about what they were doing, and it scared the perverts. You know what I mean? They don't want to be called out, so it's 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 safer overall. And and me and perhaps that is a part of the divine timing of it. Um, where this is happening because it needs to happen. So it moves into, I think, a spiritual aspect of it. There needs to be a balancing of, of how power is, is distributed um, between men and women because men haven't been leading well. You know, they, it, it was, it was society had, has given men for, you know, the, the, the reasons that men are not, are not, are not, a, anatomically <laughs> anatomically stronger just the average man than the woman and so on mm. so i think you know leading up from centuries ago where or, or thousands i don't know where like men were kind of 
being called the breadwinners because they could afford to go out and hunt and stuff. And it, that kind of lived on. And, um, you know, uh, just they were given the lead. Yeah. But did it, they just haven't been leading well. They've been abusing their power. So, you know, the, the whole calling them out and women saying that this isn't OK. Yeah, like, this is wrong. Like, you know, women are being made to suffer because men don't know how to control themselves. It's yeah. Sorry. I spoke for long. Not well, I'm not sorry, but like. I can, I'm kind of repeating myself now, whatever. Um, you could, if yeah. I had my way, you'd be speaking for as long as you want, quite frankly, um, <laughs> because I, I, I think you're extremely eloquent um, and you encapsulated Thank that you. all brilliantly. You didn't repeat yourself at all. Um, brilliant encapsulation of what it is all about. And I think it, absolutely on point when you say that men have essentially failed us. Um, <laughs> because, I mean, they, yeah. it's 2019. We've got 11 years to save the planet. Um, men, you haven't been doing that well so far, have you really? Um, so, I mean, look at Trump. He he literally does not believe in climate change. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's as if he's not paying attention to the weather in his own country. Yeah. They just, it's, I don't even know. It's I, mind blowing, isn't it? It's I absolutely. can't believe he's president, honestly. I just, I don't know. Come to the UK and, and see Boris Johnson on your screen 24 7. That's that's nearly nearly as bad. Um, it, it's, it's, we are in very peculiar times, Savannah, I have to say. And I, quite, yeah. I, I could have you on um, my political podcast, never mind the music, but um, we, <laughs> we, we might have to do that as well sometime. Look, I have to wrap I'm this down. Yeah, that's right. Lovely. It's going in the diary. Brilliant. Um, we have to wrap this up um, just briefly because you've been so, so, so busy this year. You had sort of a mad busy festival season. Obviously, nobody man yeah. blew up. Um, few months of the year left. What's in store for Savannah for the rest of 2019? What you up to? All right. Well, um, the Rock and Groove Rhythm produced by ProTJ will be coming out and it features myself, Leela Ike, Naomi Cohen and Jazzily. So we all have... F- Four different songs on that rhythm. And I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be really big. And I'm really excited for people to hear the different kinds of like ways that we interpret it. We each interpreted the the, the rhythm. Mm. Um, I'm really excited about that. That's coming up very shortly. Um, and you'll probably get access to it as well. I think they're going to be sending it out to the, to the DJs shortly before it's even released on Spotify and all the streaming platforms. Excellent. But yes, so that project is upcoming. I'm also headed to Washington, D.C. for Howard Homecoming, mm-hmm. right? The Howard University Homecoming. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, it's going to be, I imagine that it's going to be packed and I'm going to have a lot of fun. Um, and then in December, I guess I'm just talking about the big looks. I'm going to be performing on the Puma stage in Dubai. Excellent. So very excited about that. And yeah. 2020, are we looking at an album possibly? Please, 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 you please. You are looking at an EP for me for that 2020. That do nicely. <laughs> I know. And then you'll be looking for an album in 2021. And then there are things also that are happening behind the scenes that were, but, you know, some major opportunities are being presented that I'm really excited about. So, and I, and I suppose it will make news soon once, um, you know, everything is finalized, but. Yeah, there's a lot happening and I'm really excited. I'm actively working on my EP. Actually, I was in the studio with Benji, Fred's brother. I don't know if you, you're you familiar with them. Oh, yes. Um, and yeah, and I and I worked on worked on some songs and there's one song in particular from that session that I really love and I think is going to do really well. So just creating new music and the working just never stops. And I wouldn't have it any other way because I am obsessed with music. So I'm in the right field. Um, but yeah. You That's what's are. Happening. You are completely in the right field, and um, I'm so. I, I'll have to see if you, Jazz, and Leela can all come on together. That'd be brilliant to talk about the. Rhythm. Oh my goodness, that would be a lot of That'd fun because be so cool. we have a lot of fun together when we when we meet up over lunch and stuff. So Excellent. that'd be a lot. Of, I will fun. be speaking to indignation in the next few hours about that. <laughs> my goodness, right. Savannah, you are. I mean, I thought you were phenomenal as an artist. You're even better to I, speak to as well. I really, really enjoyed that. That was. Absolutely Thank brilliant. You.
Um, you're Thank just you. it's so refreshing to well no it's not refreshing actually because there are it, it, it shouldn't surprise me um, but it, yeah. it's, it is refreshing to speak to someone who's so on point and I have so much respect for the fact that you branch outside of music and go into other areas yeah. to try and evoke change where it is needed yeah. especially surrounding climate change and especially surrounding issues of colorism and young yeah. specifically black men it's a huge issue in the UK as well and I, I yeah respect to you for doing doing such excellent work on that but you are absolutely brilliant that was such a great interview <laughs> um and yes we will have to see if you jazzalies and leah ik can all come on together and we could have it that will be amazing and that will be fun as well but for the minute savannah thank you so much for coming on that was brilliant thank you thank you you're brilliant as well so <laughs> i appreciated the conversation i'm not a big fan of interviews just because they ask no. me the same questions every time and i and i kind of just go on autopilot until the interview is done but i was i was engaged you know what i mean you're engaging you asked uh very well um very well constructed questions and i i'm i'm grateful for that so thank you yeah I'm blushing this end. That is very kind of you to say. <laughs> I know I do appreciate it. that. It's really lovely. Thank you very much. Is that, it's because I'm interested, Savannah, is what it is. That's, and I, I go back to what I say. I only yeah. have guests that I think are brilliant and I'm interested in it. It's because I'm genuinely interested. So, and you are right. extremely interesting. So, it's thank not you. hard work at all. Right. Savannah, thank you. You're welcome. Oh my goodness, how good was Savannah? Wow, what an absolute star. I mean, as I said in the interview, I could wax lyrical about her musical capabilities all day, but she absolutely blew it out of the park in terms of her commentary on political and social issues, not least talking about climate change and the ecological catastrophe we we all face, but also her film project Fear. As you can tell, she's just so passionate about evoking change in society and using what she does to try and do that. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant guest. Love her to bits. Absolutely great. And here is the song that we spoke about in the podcast, which is one of her strongest tracks, in my opinions, and absolutely on point. This is a fantastic Savannah with the equally fantastic Justice. Savannah, Justice, check this out. I'm putting up borders, splitting the earth into worlds. So if I belong to the third world, it means that the first bears more fruit. So selfish with what we have And not really mindful of who Will suffer and so we Continue to tear down a brood Never ever thinking long term Always thinking of what we can earn now If you're asking what your life is worth What will the answer as you litter the ground The earth will serve us justice Well I'll live you and me With every storm you know there's justice The sea washes the street Why do you curse the place that serves you? What makes you think that we're supreme? No more time money will protect you uh, From all the energy we steal The earth will serve us justice Don't have to choose to believe We all think that we're so mighty Well if we cannot see we feel Everything made to sell so we don't hear the truth Never ever thinking long term Always thinking of what we can earn now If I ask you what your life is worth What will you answer as you litter the ground? The earth will serve us justice Well, I'll live you and me With every storm you know there's justice The sea washes the street Why do you curse the place that serves you? What makes you think that we're supreme? No more time money will protect you uh, From all the energy we steal The earth will serve us justice Don't have to choose to believe We all think that we're so mighty Well, if we cannot see, we feel Oh, it will rain down What we do will catch up, will catch up, will catch up Not until the end has come And all I is running out Will we believe? Because then we'll see
The earth will serve us justice Well, I'll live you and me With every storm that pulls There's justice The sea washes the street Why do you curse the place that serves you? What makes you think that we're supreme? No more time money will protect you all From all the energy we steal The earth will serve us justice Well, I'll live you and me With every storm that pulls There's justice The sea washes the street No more time money will protect you From all the energy we steal No more time money will protect you The earth will serve us justice Well, I'll live you and me With every storm you know there's justice The sea washes the street Why do you curse the place that serves you? What makes you think that we're supreme? No more time money will protect you uh, From all the energy we steal The earth will serve us justice Don't have to choose to believe We all think that we're so mighty Well, if we cannot see, we feel The earth will serve us justice Well, I'll believe you with me And that's it. Another very special episode of Top Lane Coach is done. I'd like to thank my fantastic guest, the incredible Savannah. You can follow her on Instagram, not Twitter. It's at Savannah. As always, behind the scenes, thank you to the love of my life, the gorgeous Nicola Jeffrey. Follow her on Twitter. It's at Nicola C. Jeffrey. My man behind the booth, sound engineer Gaff Pauls. Follow him on Twitter. It's at Pauls with AZ Radio. And my in-house singer, it's Ray Star Music. Follow her on Twitter. It's at Ray underscore star 113. Thank you to the Canary for engaging me. I will see you again soon. Uncaged.